People's sexiest man alive just revealed this year. It is Dwayne The Rock Johnson. We are joined now by longtime Oklahoman, a Hall of Famer, WWE announcer, and a huge Sooner fan, Jim J.R. Ross. Jim, can you hear us? Thanks so much for being along. I sure can. Thanks for having me. So when we just found out The Rock was named the sexiest man alive, I thought we had to get JR on the phone because you have such a strong connection and you played quite a role in, in the, his success. Well, we uh, were very lucky. When I was the executive vice president of WWE, uh, I signed The Rock to his first contract in 1995 and had a tryout with him down in Florida. And I noticed at lunch uh, after our workout that Every female in the restaurant was coming by our table for, for a variety of reasons. I never drank so much sweet tea in my life, thanks to the folks never letting the glass get empty. So he had quite the sex appeal then. And, uh, and, he, and the great thing about Dwayne is that he really hasn't changed much. He's, he's really a good guy. I know you're pretty humble, but you really helped create him and form the rock into what he is today. I mean, how he talks and his demeanor and just just walk us through what you saw in him that made you think we got to sign this guy and and what you did after that after you signed him and things that you told him the advice that you gave him and uh what you told him about the way that he should present himself and his persona well uh you know first of all he had a he was, had a very exotic look you know his, his father is a uh a black man from nova scotia uh, his mother is samoan so D rock has a very exotic look very unique and as a producer or a t someone that acquires talent, you want uniqueness. You want the it factor if you can find it. He certainly has the it factor. My contribution, well, one of the contributions, I think, was when I was broadcasting Atlanta Falcon football, this player named Deion Sanders was there, and I'd interview Deion pretty much every week, but I always had to ask if Deion if I could interview Primetime, his other ego. So I told Rock the story, and I said, might be something you want to try. So he picked up the third-person deal It became his part of his mantra, and uh, just a great gift to Gab. He always wanted to be an entertainer. He, he experienced some of that in wrestling, but then uh, he got discovered on Monday Night Raw, and the rest is history. So it was kind of your idea to say you want to maybe talk about yourself in third person. You might want to go by The Rock instead of just your name. Well, I just thought that it makes him unique, and he was from, uh, he played football at the U. He was on the national championship team in 1991 as a, as a defensive lineman. And they were always known for talking trash, for being brash and, and uh, having a little swagger. So I just said accentuate what you, what you are. And as long as you are, are original and organic, uh, I think the fans are going to uh, accept you very well. And, and they have, and last year he made $85 million. So I think he's being accepted by a lot of people. I'd say he's doing pretty well, too. It's so cool that he has such this strong connection through you to Oklahoma. Do you still talk to him? Do you still see him? And you mentioned that he, he hasn't changed much. So what is he like? Is he an outgoing person? Is he? We see a lot of times that they have this alter ego and they're normally really, really shy. I see that in a lot of football players, a different personality on and off the field. What is The Rock really like in person? He's very similar to what you see on television. That's, I think, why he, it works so well for him. He is natural. So he's not, he's not uh, in a character. He's a really an outgoing guy, big smile all the time, bigger than life, quite frankly. So I can tell you this, I'm working on my uh, autobiography, which will be out next year, and uh, he wrote uh, one of the forwards to it and was very happy to do it and, and kind of chronicled uh, how I signed him back in the day. He had $7 at lunch that day, $7. He said, I'd love to buy lunch, Jr. I don't have the money. I have seven dollars, and so today his uh, production company is called Seven Bucks Entertainment. So anytime you see that, now you know the story behind how that name came about. He literally had seven bucks to his name when we signed him. Wow, seven dollars, and you helped him turn that seven dollars into millions and millions of dollars. What should my nickname be? I need to I need to get on this uh, Jr. train. No, very <laughs> very cool, Jim Jr. Ross. And then also want to ask you. I know you're busy with the barbecue stuff, but I see you on the Sooner sideline all the time. What do you think about the Sooners? I mean, looking pretty good right now. Yeah, they they got on a roll offensively for sure. Uh, you know, still waiting for that defense to play the their their best game. And that would be very timely to be this Saturday night because traveling to Morgantown uh, amongst the moonshine and the partiers <laughs> is really a daunting task on Saturday night. So I, I, I know it's going to be really, really tough, but I am an, I'll be watching the game from Toronto. So 
uh, I will I will find the game somehow, some way, but it's not going to be easy for the Sooners this week. Jim J.R. Ross, a Hall of Famer, the announcer for WWE. We certainly appreciate your time. It's such an interesting, cool connection that The Rock, the 2016 Sexiest Man Alive, has to you and through you to Oklahoma. Very, very neat, J.R. I know you're an extremely busy guy, so we certainly appreciate the time.